Hey guys, welcome to this episode of War the Dork, number 27. I'm going to start it off right away. Uh, this was a very, very close war. This alliance isn't in the top 100, but they were super uh, after it during the race. They actually were beating our butts. And this war is going to go down to the wire. We're talking both teams getting to toes, and we're all attacking the remaining rooms at the exact same time as the energy drops. Like, the energy drops, we're in there, we're attacking. There's seven seconds between the winner and the loser of this war. I'm not going to spoil who won it. Maybe I'm upset, maybe I'm giddy, who knows? Stick tuned to find out. So, uh, we're doing an X-Force right now against Mercs with Hela. Because the Hela has Gregs, you instantly get your uh, speed bar for X-23, and you get to crush their team. So just like last war, this is a very easy win. Uh, this was a slight punch up, but not very impressive as a whole. And sorry for big me back there and the screen's all disfocused. That's gonna be the first two videos. I was recording on Streamlabs instead of through Bluestacks, and it kind of looked weird, so I had to crop it off a little bit. So that's the first fight, very easy win. You'll see they got ahead of us in the race, and they uh, they just keep pushing that lead and pushing and pushing and pushing. So uh, this is like a doom killing team for me normally, but I saw a big Emirators team and thought, well, let's just keep this ball rolling because we were really lacking in the race. Nobody was attacking. Uh, we eventually got after it, but. Shouldn't have taken us that long, especially since we were the uh, the favorites to win this with our damage. So you see, I put in Loki on this team. Captain Marvel doesn't do anything really, but the Loki does increase everybody's, uh, or sorry, reduces everybody's resistance on the enemy team, as well as it makes Hela go faster because she's a villain mystic, which is always good. Helps her go before the uh, Emma. So there you go, we got the ability block on Strafe, and we'll spread that with Emma, and then this team is obviously dead in the water at that point. There you go. Emma's all but dead, and she got the ability block, so she's not going to do anything to keep herself alive. We just got to get past this taunt. Well, actually, we got past it on the Zemo uh, passive. Then we get to kill the Minerva, and then we take out some Yeah, just... This team is an absolute uh, Emirater destruction crew. In fact, this team is actually a Doom plus Emirater destruction crew. I just really wanted to keep attacking. Yeah, it's nice to get to show off President Loki. Someone's got to show him off because the Loki show definitely did not. And there goes Mystique. So that's a very easy win. Now we're two for two. Yeah, so big shout out to Legends Tomorrow. They actually killed it this war. They were punching up huge, and they really stuck it to us in a really annoying way, but good for them for sure. Uh, this is a almost 100k punch down, but it's a stacked room, and it's actually a pretty stacked team. It's uh, Uncanny plus Minerva and Drax with Doom. Obviously, that's a big, uh, you got to get around the tanks to get to the Doom, and you got to get around the Minerva, otherwise she'll res the Doom. So let's see what we can do here. I'm using my Falcon Doom team. I'm very confident in this team. I throw in Invisible Woman with Black Bolt just to make sure that it's safe. Worst comes to worst, we got the barrier here. It's gonna protect us from all the damage. And then she's actually gonna be able to put defense up on us afterwards as well. So Invisible Woman is a very important piece uh, in this matchup anyway. So now we get Taunt on our Red Guardian. He does clear that Disrupt before he tries to Taunt, so that's how that works. I want to kill this uh, Phoenix, or at the very least, get her into yellow before I knock the Doom down, because I don't want Colossus to apply a new taunt. So there, Colossus lost his taunt. We're stuck attacking the Phoenix, which is fine, because now she's Dark Phoenix, and my Doom still has his turn. He's going to annihilate them, which is great. So Dark Phoenix is going to take a big hit here, and then my Black Bolt's actually going to get three turns before Phoenix, uh, well, Phoenix is dead anyway. But had she survived, Black Bolt would have been able to do more damage to her. So Black Bolt goes ahead, he does the special. Now we're going to do the uh, basic first, then we're going to do the ultimate. So uh, we just got rid of Drax, but now we got this uh, Doom left. I'm wondering here, I'm going to get one more turn on my Black Bolt and one more turn on my uh, Invisible Woman before anything else. So let's see if we can't kill this Doom. If Black Bolt gets the kill, then of course Doom is forever dead. And that's exactly what happens because of the passive on Black Bolt. So Minerva's threat was kind of neutralized by the Black Bolt passive. 
that's kind of way this team worked, and um, my Falcon Doom for sure contributed huge there too. Very tricky Doom team to get around though. I appreciate the creativity on that one. Here's attack number four. We're doing uh, X Factor with Namor against a uh, Fantastic Four. I've not done this matchup. I haven't seen it done. It was done in security. Uh, like I said, I'm still kind of limit testing with X Factor, and they keep surprising me more and more every time. So let's get in here. I was worried that maybe Johnny Storm is going to wreck somebody, but he goes for a clone, which kind of just lets me unload on them. I know She-Hulk will throw whatever I put on them back at me, but I figure, hey, if I can kill Johnny Storm before that happens, then we're all good. And it's just a bloodbath here, yeah. Completely wrecked them. There goes Johnny. Group them together. I'm going to summon this. And before she throws it back at us, that's why I summoned with the mum. No, I, I mean, I would have summoned with him anyway. But not attacking made it so Namor got to take his turn before she Hulk threw it all back at us. And then, uh, well, Shatterstar goes in there and just obliterates their team. So, X-Factor, just such a great team. I can't wait to build them up a little bit more with some T4s. Build up my Rhino a bit and start tackling those Brotherhood Doom teams. I think that's probably their best use. Also their sketchiest use, but still their best use. Here comes attack number five. This is a giant punch down Symbiotes into uh, Sinister Six. I was laughing at that. I was like, well, I might as well use my uh, Symbiotes. They're not really good anywhere else. And uh, I actually struggled on this. Partially because uh, the Vulture summoning the, uh, the Rhino, because they have Shocker and Vulture out. I wasn't very used to that. Normally, I would just beat up on the summon, but because it's a rhino, his health is really big, and we're not able to knock him into yellow as easily as we would the other members of the Sinister Six. So I stick to my guns, and I go for uh, Electro here. I think the smarter move would have been Vulture. She did uh, resist the offense down, which is super lame of her, but that's okay. We have an ability bluff. We want to throw that on uh, Doc Ock before he flips all our stuff. So we go ahead and we do that. And with any luck, we'll knock people low in time for uh, Venom to spread that ability block. But I'm not sure because as you see, my six red star scream is getting destroyed, as is my carnage. And if we lose both, we're going to be in a world of hurt. But we did knock someone into yellow, so we got a little bit of speed. And my carnage holds on just by the skin of his teeth. He keeps holding on. If this team was a little bit bigger, I would have been in a lot of trouble. Uh, but we go ahead and we take out the Electro there. And now, obviously, we're in control. We're going to get a bunch of slows and disrupts. We're going to just keep piling on, and we're just going to walk away with this one now. So the resist on the offense down from Scream on the baby Electro was kind of weird, and that hurt a lot. And the uh, the Summon Rhino threw me for a loop. But this, this was a pretty... Pretty safe match to take, right on a 200k punch down. You would hope so, anyway. In, uh, in retrospect, I would have went for the Vulture. Much squishier, much less resistance, easier to uh, get low and get your symbiotes rolling. Just soak up that Electro ult. It kind of sucks to lose all your buffs and everything, but uh, you'll be fine and you'll, you'll get through it. So Doc Ock's going to bleed out at this point. Could have got off him if I chose to. I guess we just don't like them. Just gonna keep piling up. Sure, steal all that. Why not? We finally get off him when he's got five life left. We get off of him. That's fun. He'll bleed out. We go ahead and we finish off this shocker, and uh, we walk away with the 200k punch down. Lucky us. So there you go, you see that they're still in the lead and they're pushing their lead. I think they clear our buff rooms before we clear theirs, like not even close. So they did really good there. This was a really interesting one actually. This was Black Order punching up against like a secret Avengers Avengers hybrid team. And I knew what this would be safe because they don't have much damage, or at least I thought that was the case. But then watch what this shifty secret Avengers team is capable of doing. They're a team that I really do think we're gonna see on defense and they're gonna throw people for a loop. So it's best we start working on a counter for them now. I doubt you're gonna see Maria Hill or Fury on the team because then it's gonna be Astonishing X-Men or uh, Symbiote Fodder. But there's gonna be different variations, maybe with a Captain America for more energy, maybe with a Hawkeye to slow people down, but it's gonna be pretty nuts. 
you see there my cull gets obliterated with the uh, stun all the damage on my Proxima and Corvus gets really out of control should have saved that flip had I known this matchup a little bit better that could have helped me out a lot drop these slows right because those slows are devastating especially on cull we can't flip the uh, the stun off for him to shake it off with his taunt so I think Black Order will probably be able to beat Secret Avengers if we play it properly, but it might have sketchy RNG moments similar to like Emma Rodders with Doc Ock did before people really hammered it home. But we dropped the Black Widow. She's a very squishy character. We don't get stuck behind taunts there. She was kind of put in harm's way beside the, uh, the Falcon here. Had, say, uh, the two Captain Americas been beside each other and Thor on the other side, I think they would have been better off. We go ahead, we put offense down on everybody. Thor goes, uses his ult. He does stun my Proxima. But then we get to beat him up a little bit. Thanos will take out the Thor here. And there goes the rest of their damage. I think Sharon Carter's damage was really high at the beginning there. Uh, but she seems to be a cooldown character. So once she's blown her load, you're pretty safe. Kind of like Coulson. Yeah, we have it on auto. Just beat up the two Secret Avengers last. And there you go. So we did win. It was a punch up. I think you add uh, Kestrel on that team and it's going to be really, really difficult to take it out. Kestrel over Thor there would have been a, a real big pain. So here's attack number seven. We're using our Kestrel team with Fury. Uh, we got our Black Widow and our Captain Sand. And we throw in Phoenix for fun here because I'm not using Uncanny X-Men on offense anymore. I was supposed to throw them on defense, but I forgot. And looking at this now, this footage is so much cleaner because it's from my phone and not from Boostax. I might have to start recording everything from the phone. So Black Widow gives us speed up, which is great. Now Kestrel's going to take her turn. I don't think we're going to kill anybody here, so we're going to head start with the special. Go ahead and nuke that Shuri and beat up that yo-yo a little bit. Get a bunch of speed from our Captain Sam. 250 so that does confirm that he gets the speed even if it misses because yo-yo did dodge that so that's good Kestrel eats the Coulson oh not too much trouble not too much damage there Phoenix goes down but she comes back as Dark Phoenix she doesn't care about that offense down she'll do a big drain here yo-yo's back in trouble see if we can't finish her off actually I think we're gonna try and clear this uh, yeah we clear out the defense up on the Black Bolt we give him defense down. Kestrel's gonna ping him. Oh no, she's not because of Yo-Yo or sorry, Crystal uh, passive cleansing it. But that's okay. We're still gonna be just fine. Yeah, those Inhumans can be pretty tricky with the way uh, Crystal's passive cleanses things and gives them back their life. Uh, but it's not so bad. Kestrel's obviously way better than Black Bolt. She's like Black Bolt 2.0, but with better AOE and shorter cooldowns. So there goes Black Bolt. Nothing left but uh, some members from the Shield show and Crystal. I love that Fury giving us the defense up. We use that at the beginning of the fight. To give ourselves some more speed. Give us the defense up to withstand whatever they're going to throw at us. And then we just go to town on them. So I really do like Fury in the hands of the player. On defense, he's kind of trash. Oh, there you go. So they're still ahead of us, and I believe this is in the morning now, so like we really need to get going because these wars can end before that fourth energy drop if you're not careful. This is a giant punch down. I'd seen Cargo Bay at least, but it's Astonishing X Men against Emirators. Looks like uh, Mystique went and hogged all the buffs from the Cargo Bay there. We want to get our offense up before we throw that alt off. We didn't have to, but I like to do it, especially because I want to use the uh, the empowered bishop alt on whatever sinister summons. It's going to give us a hand. Kitty drops. We got energy on our beast. It's better to use the ultimate now because if we use it next time, Emma's just going to clear everything anyway. This way, we're going to benefit from that speed up sooner and for a longer time. It also kind of just counters her slow, right? So 
So we could go for a disrupt here. We could go for some damage. I opt to try and peel some of the buffs off Sinister because I have a sneaking suspicion that we're going to kill all these people that are summoned here and we're going to get to uh, just get the Axemen speed train rolling. So there goes the Iceman letting us open up a stun on Sinister. Strife goes down as well. Sinister is getting his butt beat. Go ahead and cleanse all that. Sinister goes down. Or he will. So now we have Sabretooth and Mystique left. Mystique's buff gets stripped. This is why the assist mechanics, the ISOs on the, the uh, Slanishing X-Men are so powerful. Once we kill one person, we just we get going and we don't stop. We don't look back. We get offense up on our team. Blow that Sabretooth to hell. And let's see if we can stop this fully G15, full life Emma in her diamond form from taking her second turn and getting that blind off of us really solidify that using that ult was the right thing to do at the time and we are just fine we completely obliterate that emma eat your heart out armor we don't care astonishing x-men is awesome so here's the next fight attack number nine and guys this is the final fight both teams are in toes the energy is dropping in 10 seconds Every single room gets attacked all at the same time. Who's going to win this race? Let's find out. So I was tasked with taking out this Doom team. I'm sure you've been aware since you haven't seen them yet. I have my Infinity Watch left. I was hoping to use them against a bigger team than this, but it is what it is. And obviously speed is the name of the game here, guys. If we're all attacking at once, we need to kill these guys as fast as possible. Probably could have thrown this on auto because it was such a big punch down, but I wanted to make sure I did it right. I'm going to take the blob out. We're going to put ability block on Doom, and then we're just going to let it do its thing. So there's the ability block. Even had it been uh, blocked by the uh, because of the deflex, we would have been just okay. So now we're on auto. We got the ability block on the person we needed it on. You see Chase down there, he's waiting for the potential cleanup if it's needed. And there you go, there goes Juggernaut. Let's see how the rest of my alliance is faring. Obviously we had a lot more rooms to clear than they did, but all the rooms were available for attack. And that's why Toes is so important. If you don't know what Toes is, guys, ask your alliance leader, your war leader. I'm sure they can fill you in. So they're up right now. Well, here it comes. Rooms just start falling. Watch that uh, timer tick up. This is all in real time, guys. This is how fast it happens. Last two rooms. So they have just one more team to kill in Reactor right now. It's a Heroes for Hire. They're fighting with Infinity Watch. We have these two teams. This is the time between their clear. 6.15 seconds in between clears. Absolutely crazy. Legends tomorrow. It was a great fight. Thanks for giving us this uh, fun war on the weekend. And of course, Pablo stealing the MVP yet again. I did pretty good. Didn't break my damage record, but not bad either. Hope you liked that video, guys. Hope you found that uh, entertaining, especially that little last part there. If you did, like and subscribe. I like to post as many war videos as I can as long as we're on on wars i'm not doing stupid stuff uh we're gonna have some more war offense mvp character video coming in the future so check that out but until then i'll see you later have a good weekend peace